Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, we'll turn to three quick readings and um, we'll launch into the word for today after we have prayed. Um, Galatians chapter 5, media, as usual, if you would help me, I will be glad. But if you will not help me, I will still be glad. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5, um, John chapter 13, and 1 John chapter 4. We'll begin from Galatians 5. I'm reading verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Against such as the fruit of the Spirit, there is absolutely no law. John chapter 13, I'm reading verse 34. And a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, to the same degree that I have loved you, in the same way that I have loved you, unqualified as you are, irrespective of what you have done, the same way, unconditionally as I have loved you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Hallelujah. And finally, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 7. That one is one we all know. Beloved, let us love one another. Why? For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God, or he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. Aha! We know those of you that went to Sunday school. Sunday school is like the nursery school of Christianity. Hallelujah. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. Love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Hallelujah. Anyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Father, we exalt you this morning. We give you all the glory and praise. We say thank you for bringing us into your presence one more time. It is always a thing of joy when they say to us, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because we know in your presence, Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures. Father, we have come for the joy. And we know, Lord God, that we will leave here pleased that we came. In the name of Jesus. Father, in this few moments, we ask that you glorify Jesus. That you make him known to your people. And that you shine him forth to the people. In the name of Jesus. Father, I know that you have put a good word in my heart. I ask, oh Lord God, that you help me to express it in the same way that you have laid it in my spirit. In the name of Jesus. I declare that after all is said and done, your people will truly be blessed. They will live here knowing that you are a shoulder that we all can lean on. You are that friend that sticks closer than a brother. You are the one who, be, who is a friend to us even when we are not friends to you. Father, we exalt you. We ask you, Lord Jesus, that today, in these few minutes, that you alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, for a while we have been on a very um, exciting journey. We have been looking at what we titled the Christian character. That is a character fitting for a Christian. That is also to say that if you're a Christian, we hope to see these character, characters in you. Every Christian should imbibe the characters that make for Christianity. And you know, Christian is from the word Christ. Christian, just like Christ. If you are just like Christ, the character of Christ should also be seen in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've looked at amazing Christian characters like um, um, sexual purity, um, servanthood, um, self-control. We've looked at integrity, goodness, kindness, all of those amazing things. And last week we started a mini-series in this series which we titled Love. And last week I believe I tried to explain to you the difference between love and love. You remember that? Hallelujah. Love. And um, we, we said that because love was too big a topic to be treated in one service. 
Unless you wanted us to stay here for a few hours, like three or four hours, you can't capture love in one service. We decided to break it into two parts. Last week, we looked at um, the definition of love. We also looked at um, the, the attributes of love. We looked at the way God has expressed his love towards us. And um, we also looked at some biblical character that, that, that um, demonstrated love in one way or another. One of them was Jonathan and David. We saw different characters in the Bible that demonstrated the God kind of love to one another. Hallelujah. And um, this week we said we are going to be looking at how we, you and I today, 21st century Christians. You know this 21st century Christian thing, eh? It's deep. Oh? We don't take nonsense. We don't take nonsense. We are so self-engrossed. It is me, myself, and I. We don't factor anybody else into the equation. You will see married people, husband engrossing himself, wife engrossing herself, and children also engrossing themselves. Everybody lives the way they like, all by themselves. Today we are going to be looking at how we can practically demonstrate the love of God, the agape nature of God in our hearts. Hallelujah. But just for the sake of those who were not here um, last week, we'll do a quick recap. Um, we define love as, uh, we gave three definitions of love. Love is an intense feeling of deep affection. Love is a great interest or pleasure in something or someone. You can have love for some things, you can have love for some people. Hallelujah. Like some of us love food. Some of us love soccer. Oh, I like, I like some, some fine rice. If you want to know, ask Sister Hanatu. She makes this kind of rice that you have never eaten before. Some of us love things. Some of us love um, different kinds of events or whatever. But then God expects us to love people. Hallelujah. And the third definition of love we saw is that love is an attachment or a devotion to a person or persons. And that's the kind of love that God expects for us an attachment to him and a devotion to him, and also an attachment and devotion to one another. Hallelujah. However, we said last week that we're going, to be, well, we're going to be focusing on the God kind of love. The God kind of love, not the way the world loves. The way the world loves is upside down, is whacked. Love, world has love for self, and world has love for people who do good to them. They don't care for anybody else. But we're looking at the God kind of love. And we titled it, we called it what? Agape or divine love. We saw last week that this love, um, this kind of love is, is unselfish, is a loyal and benevolent concern for the good or the best for somebody else, not for self. The God kind of love is not for self, it's for someone else. We also say that this agape is the highest and the purest form of love. There are different forms of love. I can come here and give you the seven different types of love that we have. Agape is the highest and the purest form of love. Do you know why that is? Because it, 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 has, it has nothing. It is not based on our, our emotions or our feelings. You know, anything, our, have you seen people's feelings? It, flick, it fluctuates like this nepa and the microphone. That's how our feelings fluctuate. This minute we love you, the next minute we don't feel like it anymore. And you understand it can be very confusing. But the agape kind of love has nothing to do with emotions, absolutely nothing to do with how we feel. It is based purely on choice and will. I choose to love you irrespective. I, I, I commit as a matter of my will to love you irrespective of what you do, whether you qualify or you don't. That is the agape that we're talking about. It's what we call an ongoing benevolence. And last week, we looked at benevolence as, as made up of two words. There's the root word, which is the volence. Volence simply means willing uh, what is good or best. And bene, which is the prefix, means for another. So benevolence means willing what is best for another. And we use that as a definition for agape. The agape means what? A steady intention of one's will for the highest good of another. Did we, look at, did we say that last week? Hallelujah. We also say that this kind of love called agape is characterized by two things. Unselfishness and giving. Agape would always give. For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. Give, agape would always give. And sometimes this giving can, can, can be sacrificial. 
You give to the point where the thing will pain you. Oh, God. How many of you have given to that, that thing that really, really pained you? <laughs> but you let it go all the same. That's what we're talking about. And this kind of love also is unconditional. It doesn't judge anyone based on merit or performance. As you go to start your care groups, you will love the people equally. The one that comes early, you love them. The one that comes when you're about to share the grace or they only show up because it's time for OGS, you love them still, irrespective. It doesn't judge based on performance. That is the agape that we talk about. And we say that this kind of love, God is the source. We saw that last week, that God is the source of this kind of love. It flows from him because he is love personified. So agape flows from God. And because uh, he has first loved us, we in turn are supposed to also demonstrate the love of God. Because he first loved us, we also should demonstrate the love. And because this love of God is inside of us, we are beneficiaries of this love, God expects that by his spirit, he can stir in us the willingness and the ability to love like he has loved, to go out there and do the same. I remember concluding last week, I said we are supposed to go out as little, little Jesuses distributing the love of God everywhere that we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we shall be looking at um, dwelling on, the, on some practical ways that we can demonstrate love in our families, in our communities, and the society at large. Hallelujah. Um, one of the ways we can do this, I'm, we, we are, I'm going to still group them into broad categories, meet people's physical needs. James chapter 2, media if you help me, James chapter 2, verse 15. 15, 15, 15. 15 is 1 and 5, not 1 and 4. Hallelujah. If a brother or a sister is naked and destitute, some of us might not be completely naked, but we are naked in the sense that um, last Sunday... You came to church in the same outfit. You washed it, dried it, and wore it again today. And you and I know that except something happens next week, you might be repeating the same outfit. To an extent, you qualify naked and destitute of daily food. Can't find anything to eat. Next verse. And one of you say to them, Ah! Oh, aya, aya. Ah, yeah, it is well, eh? It is well. Don't worry, just go. God will help you. It is well. It is well. Depart in peace. Be warmed and filled. But you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit it? You know what the scripture is saying? That you are a fraud. You know what they need. Ah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, is all you give them. You are a fraud. Fraud how? You are, a, you are a Christian fraud. You are pretending to be a Christian. So what does it profit? Hallelujah. So people have physical needs, saints of God. They have need for clothing. They have need for food. They have need for shelter. They have need for jobs, need to pay bills, and so many other needs that we might not be able to mention here. Can you help out when you can? Can you help out when you can? Ah, Pastor, me, I don't want them to touch my savings. So, ah, at that money, I'm saving it. My, 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 my child is entering primary five. Very soon, he'll be going to university. You didn't hear me. <laughs> the child is in primary five. They're already saving up for university. But someone right now is dying. We won't be bothered. We mustn't touch our child's university trust fund. Even though right now they're in primary three. Can we help out? Can you buy a little more food than you need? Can you do that? Buy a little more food than you need? Can you be generous enough to share the little food that you have and trust that God will catch both you and the man you share the food with? Can we do that? Can we be willing to take someone in? Maybe for a brief moment, they are going through distress they need a month or two to sort themselves out. Can you take them in and say, okay, for this one month or two months, come and live with us while you sort yourself out. 
Can we do things like that? Can, would, are you willing to uh, 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 be, be, be extra nice to that person that doesn't even look like they care or they, are, they show appreciation? Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to bring some clothes for someone? I don't know, you may not have noticed you have more clothes than you can wear. Go home and check, go through your things. You will find out that there are some outfits you have not worn in two years. And you are still keeping it. You are hoping that one day you will lose weight. Okay, there's a lady in front here, she's laughing very hard. Hoping that one day you will lose weight. Some of them are see your size, but then you have outgrown the style or the fashion. You, you just don't like the clothes anymore, but you can't let it go. You have more clothes than you need. In case you don't know, let me tell you now. Can you be a blessing to a brother? Can you be a blessing to a sister? Some of us have, a, have our own unique challenges. If I want to give a shirt, I don't know who will wear it. <laughs> I have, I, have, I have a unique size in this congregation. <laughs> so if I give you this suit, for example, now it will probably be at your knee. When you wear it, it, it will be at your knee. And then the hands, the, the, the sleeves will cover your fingers. But even at that, I still know there are one or two people that I can give some things to, and I do that once in a while I try. But you have more clothes than you need. Create jobs for people. People have needs. Oga, are you not too big to be washing that car? Get someone to wash the car and pay them something. Let them also earn something. Is that not so? You know, do you know that sometimes for some people it's a little bit humiliating to be taken um, from you all the time? You are too big to do some of the things. You, at your age, you are still doing your laundry. You will bend down to wash your car. Some of us, when we bend down now, we need a crane for someone to lift us up. <laughs> We are getting there slowly. Get someone to wash the car and let them earn something. Someone can come and do your laundry and earn something. You can create small, small jobs. Come to do the ironing and earn something. Come to clean the house and earn something. Give people opportunities to be able to earn something from you. Create little, little jobs like that. Some of us are bosses. You employ one staff and they are doing the work of five people. Create a job. God will bless the business. Let two or three other people come and join that one. You have just given four people a means of livelihood. You think God is going to let that business die? Because he knows that people feed from it. Create jobs. Find little, little things that you can do. But be a blessing to people. That's how we love that's one way we can demonstrate love in this church. Love in action. Number two, meet people's emotional needs. Romans chapter 12 and verse 15. Media, please help me. Romans 12, 15. Rejoice with those who... And weep with those who do what? Who weep? Meet people's emotional needs. Because we have emotions. There are times when we are happy and we need people to share the joy with us. And there are moments when we are sad. Something bad has happened and we need people to be there for us to give us a shoulder that we can lean on. To say, lean on me when you're not strong. People need to know that there's a shoulder that they can lean on. Because you see, on this journey of life, every one of us needs shoulders. Every one of us. So be there for people in their high moments. Be there for people in their low moments. There's graduation. Someone in the family is graduating. Or maybe the man is graduating from school. Master's degree, PhD, or even a first degree. We are there to celebrate with them. Their high moments. Their children are getting married or receiving an award from an institution. We are there to celebrate with them, to rejoice with them. We are there in people's good times. But we are also available when the vicissitudes of life hit you. Because those things come. 
They do come. They do come. Even to the finest of us, they come. Did we not lose Pastor Ina? They come. In those low moments, we are there. We are there. Offer counsel. Offer words of encouragement. Say some nice things. Okay, Pastor, me, I just don't know what to say. Just sit down there. I did this one time. <laughs> and this man was just wondering, what kind of man is this? Because me, I'm the kind of person that truly, I don't want to go to places. I just want to be in my house. But when this man lost his wife, she was somebody I loved so dearly. I would just go, I would show up in this man's house in the morning. I would sit down there in the sitting room. I won't say what, I'll just greet him and just sit down there. People are coming, I welcome some of them. Sometimes he's tired, he goes inside, I receive the visitor, I just sit down there. You don't need to say anything, just sit down there. I did this thing for like two weeks. <laughs> One day the man looked at me and he just hugged me. He said, thank you for being there. You understand? You don't know what to say. Just bring your presence and be silent. Sit down there. And as you sit, you begin to observe some things. You will notice that some visitors are coming and there is no water to give them. So you can just drive to the corner there and buy a, a pack or two packs of water and come and drop in the house. As you are sitting down there, you begin to notice that people are coming and are asking questions. So when is this one happening? When are we going to do this? And you see that the man is confused. He doesn't even know the first thing to do. So you go and put together a team and begin to plan the event with him. You will notice some things if you just go and sit down there. But be there with people in their, in their, in their low moments. Hallelujah. Can we visit people? When you visit people, eh, they open up to you at another realm, another level. The kind of things they ordinarily will not tell you when, because they see you in church. When you sit down in the house with them and you are breaking and eating that granite, they will begin to tell you some things that are very, very personal and private. Can we call once in a while? Scare group leaders, you need this so because God has called you to be love agents. You need this. Call, visit, call, visit. Call, visit. People feel love when you call them. Some people are here, they don't receive calls. They don't receive calls. You call them and they're waiting for you to tell them, um, this is why I'm calling. You say, no, I just call to check up on you. I just call to touch base with you. Huh? They feel loved. It's an emotional need. Every one of us have emotional tanks that need filling and refilling once in a while. You filled it up today. By the end of this month, it might have depleted. You refill again. Emotional tanks. People have emotional needs. And we as love agents are supposed to try to meet and fill these needs. Meet people's spiritual needs. Spiritual needs are real too. <laughs> they are real. Spiritual needs. And when these needs come, sometimes it can be overwhelming. Spiritual needs can overwhelm you to the point where you don't even know what to do again. Have you remember, do you remember Apostle Peter? The Bible says that Herod stretched forth his hand to vex the church. He took James, slaughtered James. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to take Peter also. And his plan was to bring Peter after Easter to kill him. Have you read it in your scripture? Or is it only in my Bible? It's in your Bible too? The Bible says that prayer was made for Peter without ceasing. That time Peter had a spiritual need. But do you know, when the angel came to rescue Peter, what was Peter doing? This man's neck, was there was an axe to his neck. He was about to lose his head, but he was sleeping. The, the man had reached his wit and he didn't even know what to do again. Sometimes some things will hit you, you cannot pray. There are some things that might hit you. you, you it will just sap you of every energy you have and you can't even pray. Can some of us take up positions at moments like that and form a guard around you and a wall around you and intercede on your behalf? That was what happened to Peter. Peter was going to be executed, but the man was so, he was so broken, he couldn't even pray. But the scripture says that prayer was made on behalf of Peter without ceasing. The church prayed. People are going through stuff. You know someone that is sick. Can you form a wall around them and pray for them? 
You know someone that is going to go for operation, a surgery in the hospital. Can you form a wall around them or a chain around them, get a few people and pray for them throughout the operation or throughout the surgery until they recover? Spiritual needs, these needs are as real as physical or emotional needs. We need to be people who pray. You read through scripture and the scripture says that God is looking for a man that will stand in the gap so that that thing that is coming from this end will not cross and affect this other person. Not for his own sake, but for the benefit of someone else. Standing in the gap. Spiritual needs, they are real. We should be willing to stand in the gap for others. Going through a surgery, you know someone that is trusting God to be married, male, female, believing God to be married. You, you are already married. Can you take that burden upon yourself and say, Kai, if it kills me, I will pray until this sister is married. I will pray until this brother finds a job or until this brother is married. Can you do that? Stand on the gap on their behalf. That is love. That is love. Once in a while, you send them a scripture to encourage them or you send them a prayer to let them know that God has not forsaken or forgotten them. You stand in the gap. When they come to share their testimony, when it eventually happens, it's your testimony too. Because you help them bet that whole process. You notice someone has been married for a while, no children. Oh, I remember there was one time after we had Elliot, we couldn't have another child. It was a major issue and concern. Three miscarriages and after that, radio silence. I will never forget, there were two deacons, one a deacon and a pastor. They came to the house, they were concerned. Some of them prayed with us, one of them prayed with us, another one held the fast with us. He was trying to say to us, you are not in this alone. We should be those kinds of people. I will never forget it in my life. I can never forget that he was concerned enough to even take a fast on our behalf. People don't forget those kinds of things. That is love in action. You can do things like that. Be willing. Be willing. Be willing to help someone. Hallelujah. Spiritual needs. Another kind of spiritual need is evangelism. This is one need that a lot of people do not even know that they have. A life without Christ? Oh, you are empty, completely empty. But a lot of people do not even know that they have these needs. Walking around town, just empty shells. But you evangelize to them out of the love that you have in your heart for them. As you win them over, you give them the best gift any man can ever give. The gift of salvation. The gift of Jesus Christ in their lives. That's a spiritual need. Can we go about as evangelists? And that's why the Bible will look at the pastor in the scripture and say, do the work of an evangelist. Whether you are a prophet, do the work of an evangelist. You are a pastor, do the work of an evangelist. You are a teacher, do the work of an evangelist. Because you cannot give anybody anything greater than salvation. Okay, now they are saved. They come to church. Can you also stretch a little and help disciple them? They are your neighbor. And you notice that uh, they, they, they are newcomers. They started coming to church. Maybe you can tell them, okay, we start our devotion every morning at 7. You feel free to join us. Maybe the first two days you go and call them. And then they come and join you. We are gathering together unto thee. He does that the first week. He does that the second week. Guess what? He's forming a pattern. Eventually, on his own in his house, you'll be hearing him. We are gathering together. On his own, you are discipling them. You teach them how to study the word. Buy them a Bible. Little things like that. People have spiritual needs. And these needs, they might not even know about. Meet their spiritual needs. So we meet their physical needs. We meet their emotional needs. And we also meet their spiritual needs. These are practical ways we can show or demonstrate love to people. Love is not only when you give people clothes and shoes and bags and rice. So the one I just described is even love at another dimension. 
It is only a man that loves you so much that will be concerned that you are a sinner headed straight for hell. And like Pastor Ina will say, on a banana peel or in a wheelbarrow, going to hell. But as love agent, God expects expect us to intercept that journey and turn that person onto the path of righteousness and help them grow in the process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you be willing to do that? This is how we demonstrate practically that we love God. Teach people to give. Teach them to tithe. Teach them to tithe. I do that sometimes with some of my friends. I tell them, do you tithe? He said, um, sometimes. I said, no, not sometimes. Okay, but me, I have a challenge. I'm a businessman. It's difficult to calculate my profit sometimes. Okay, why don't you give on the, why don't you err on the side of caution? Like, like Pastor Sarah would always say, how much do you think you make in that business averagely in a month? He said, uh, maybe like 20, 30,000, just as less even approximate it to 50. No, I don't make that much. Fine, give a tithe on 50,000. Then you know that you couldn't have gone wrong. It is better to overgive than to undergive. Because if you undergive, you have not tightened. If it's not 10%, it's not tight. Do you understand? You can teach things like that. You are helping them. It's important. And I'm saying this also because I, I know that a lot of us in this church do not tight. I know. We give. I can point the titers here. When the alert comes, you know this one is tight. You will know. <laughs> You will see the tight. We know the tight. The one that has 30 naira. You know it's tight. <laughs> a lot of us don't tight. We give, but we don't tight. Let me tell you what happens if you give and not tight. The Bible calls the tight holy. Right? So when you give and not tight, you have given that which is good, but you have kept that which is holy. You have given that which is good, but you have kept that which is holy. And guess what? The tithe is not yours. So if you do not tithe, the Bible calls you in scripture, not me, calls you a robber. You are robbing God. When you keep that which is not yours, you are a thief. We need to begin to be people who are not only tithers, but consistent in our tithing. Hallelujah. So you can teach people how to tithe. You can teach people to come to church early, you notice that man that is always coming late after praise and worship? You can volunteer to just make a small detour and pick him up. Tell him, I'll be at your place at 6.15. <laughs> you put them on edge. Maybe the first few times you call him, I have to wait five minutes for them to wear their shoes. But you wait. And little by little by little, you see they begin to, if, by the time you come by 16, they are there waiting for you already. You have, they have learned how to become early and punctual to church. There are little things you can teach people to begin to do. That is a demonstration of love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fourth one we're going to be looking at now is to love family worship center style. Ah, family worship center. We have our own style of loving. We have our own style of loving. Our church is a loving church. A loving congregation. That was the first thing I saw when I came. First thing I saw when I came. By the way, I came to Abuja just to spend some time with a friend. That same week, he brought me to church. And when I came to church, I said, ah, nah, 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 nah. I'm not going anywhere again. <laughs> I stayed for like a month, went back home, brought the rest of my thing. I said, I need to go again. I'm staying in this town. I liked what I saw. A congregation that loved each other. Yes, we have our own way. We love people in this church. We celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. We celebrate birthdays. If you are in this church, somebody will recognize or remember your birthday and they will celebrate you. Sometimes it could be a surprise party. Sometimes we are at your house with our saxophone. Things like that. Sometimes we take people out to lunch or to dinner. It's their birthday. We wrap a gift. It's your birthday. We don't play with birthdays in this church. We don't play with anniversaries. And some of us have even gone all the way down to remembering your children's birthdays and their anniversaries too. We don't joke with things like that. 
We throw surprise parties. I remember the first time someone did a surprise party for me. They really, really set me up. That one I didn't know. There were two brothers in those days. And funny enough, both of them have left church now. These guys had um, met some of my friends and they had planned, let's surprise Sonny. I was a coordinator then. I wasn't even a deacon. Let's surprise our coordinator. It's his birthday. And these two guys lived together. So one day, one of them called me. And you know, he said, um, um, sorry oh, to bother me. He doesn't know. He knows that I might be very busy, but that um, he's been having issues with this other guy that he lives with. That um, he has tried to talk with him, but the thing keeps reoccurring. He thinks it, he thinks it would be better if I can step in. I said, okay, so what do you want me to do? He said, if I can come to the house, that the man hardly goes anywhere on Saturdays by so-and-so time. That if I can come to the house um, uh, so that we can, I, can, I, can put, I can join my mouth in the matter and see how, how I can resolve them. And I came to the house on Saturday. Lo and behold, everyone I knew was there. It was a party. A surprise birthday party. Things like that. We throw surprises. We have birthday parties. You can have a lavish party and you have not spent a dime. Every expense paid for by the people. We do things like that here. I will never forget the first birthday I celebrated in this church. You guys almost made me run away from this church. I'm not kidding. I almost ran away. I must have caught like five or six cakes. One birthday, six cakes. Cake everywhere I turn. Cake, 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 cake. I came into the auditorium on Sunday, like a week after my birthday, and I didn't recognize this place. Completely transformed to celebrate me. Things like that we do in family worship center. We are there on your special days. When you are promoted in the office, we are there. You are, you're, you are graduating from school or your children are graduating from school, we are there. You are having housewarming or you are opening a new office or a new branch to your office, we are there. We are there. When any member of our church is admitted in the hospital, eh, hey, 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 we overwhelm the facility. The nurses and doctors, who are these people? I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, they go. We will, <laughs> as one set is leaving, another set is coming. <laughs> who, else? who are these people? Every single time. We are the people who care. That's what you might not find in other churches. You can be admitted for a whole month. And nobody knows. Until you come back to just say, ah, now what for you? Let's say you don't backslide. You need to even they come to church again. They didn't know you had been <laughs> They don't know. But those kind of people, they can pray mountain and fire moving prayers. But you're on admission, nobody knows. Nobody knows. They don't come, they don't care. I will never forget um, one of our deaconess. She was here before she moved to the Umbora church. She said that the church that they were going to before, they left this church that nobody knew. They moved to our church, finished DTS, did membership, started leadership, and became leaders before the church began to look for them. <laughs> Not family worship center. If we don't see you, we'll call you. We will call you. Somebody will show up in your house. Oh boy, wait here. We'll not see you. Say, ah, no. I just, this morning, the car refused to start. And we're struggling with it. By the time we looked at the time, time of service was already gone. We just decided, let's just do live stream. Somebody will look for you. That is our style. Ah, if you arrest any member of our church, eh? Hey, the police station will know that they have touched the lion's tail. I will never forget a brother. I didn't even know this man. If you bring him in front of me today, I don't know him. He was in Otaku district. I was in um, Lube district as a den. But we heard that this young man was arrested for armed robbery. For armed robbery. How many of you want to go to the police station to be associated with armed robber? The whole of family worship center was there at that police station. As one set is leaving, another set is coming. We stood in that place. We held vigil. We will not move. The ones that are lawyers were... And then he, the, the evidence against this guy was overwhelming. He was going to... They, they had entered, um, uh, I, I think it's ABC Transport. In those days, before the passengers would embark, they would take photographs of all of them. And then they would embark on the journey. One of these journeys, uh, one of the passengers happened to be a robber. Yes, he was part of the robbery team that, that robbed the vehicle on the way. And then the passengers recognized that this is the man. 
When they came to the office, they took the pictures. This is the man. And this brother in our church, Kai, the, 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 the resemblance was too striking. When they showed us the picture, all of us kept quiet. It was just a slightly fatter version. You will see from the features that this picture is slightly fatter than this guy that was arrested. But the resemblance was, was terrible. But you know the confession of the policemen? They told us that we know that this man is not the thief. Because nobody shows up for an arm robber like this. Do you understand? Nobody. They said we have plenty of them in the cells. Nobody has come for them. But for this number of people to show up for this man, we know he's not the thief. But please, permit us to do our job. Don't be in a hurry to take him out of this place. Let's do our job. That brother was released. That brother was released. Oh, you arrest any of us, you touch any of us, you have taught the lion's tail. We will be there. Family worship center style of love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are in court, we are there. I remember when one of our deaconesses was taken to court. As they called up her case, she was about to stand up to go to the dock. And then she turned, she saw me. She looked at me. She didn't even know I knew that she was a case. But I was there. The moment I heard, I went to show up for their solidarity. Hallelujah. Sometimes we gang up to meet a need. We haven't done that in a while. Oh, you have noticed that... Um, Brother, brother John's car is giving him trouble. Oh, they have repaired that car. As a matter of fact, brother John is not driving the car anymore. The car is driving him. Do you know what we used to do in those days in Wuye? We can come together, seven, eight, ten of us. Let's buy brother John a car. We put together 150,000 each, 150, 200. By what you know, we have 1.5 million, 2 million. We buy brother John a car and present it to him. He had no idea. The man would be dazed. Those kinds of things we used to do. Gang up. Bring four or five people together. Let's pay this man's children's school fees. They have been home for too long. Somebody will go and find out the school fees and come and tell us. Three children, 45,000 each. Together, 135,000. We'll put together, this old bad body bring money, 20,000, 30,000. We'll put it together. At the end of the day, we'll have like 150, 160. We'll pay the school fees and we'll give him the change. Family worship center style. We used to do things like that and we still do them. If you belong to the right circles, somebody's going to get married, we'll form a committee on their behalf. The committee is supposed to help with logistics, planning of everything. And upon all the effort and sacrifice we are putting, we still put together some money to help this man with one thing or the other in the wedding. Now, committee of friends is dead. People don't even do them anymore. But guess what? That's why these days marriages are becoming very few. In our time, we could marry. You, you have raised some money. People will come together and help you and plan the wedding. And plan the wedding. Hallelujah. Family worship center style. Uh, we, we used to love to patronize one another. They call this one the Jewish model. You know Jews, eh? Their monies will stay in their community. A Jew would rather go from here to Wuse Market to buy bread than go downstairs and buy it in spa. He will take that money to another Jew. Keep the money within our community. Let's be people who do that. Why would I go and be buying, I'm building a house, I'm going and go and be buying things from another shop when our brother KK is here? Or you live in this life camp environment and you shop somewhere else? Oh, you don't know that Sister Ijoma has a shop just down this road here, not too far from this place. If I live in this area, everything from toothpaste to toothbrush to bread to chingom, I'll buy in that shop. Let's be people who encourage ourselves and our businesses to thrive and to grow. There is no Sunday I come to this church and I don't buy Zion's kunu. The only Sundays I don't buy kunu are the Sundays she didn't bring kunu. 
I'll buy them. I'll buy them. Sometimes more than I need. Because that is you encouraging or empowering somebody. Do you, you want her to go and start sleeping around? Is that what you want? Buy the kunu. Encourage her. Once in a while, I go out there and I see things that they are selling. I buy. I buy a bottle of cashew nuts. I buy some chinchin. I buy some things. Some of them, I don't even remember where I keep them. But I buy just to encourage that business. Because consider the alternative. That is someone that says that I will not beg. I will rather do something with my hand. And then you walk past as if you don't care. Buy the things. Encourage them. Because if they come and beg you for money, you wouldn't like it. Okay, now they are selling. Help them at least. Hallelujah. The Jewish model. Oh, family worship center back at the Hilton days. And up until now, a lot of people still do it. As we are seated in church like this, eh, the, the original family worship center style, almost everybody, about 40 to 30 to 40 percent of the congregation, will have one nylon bag under their seat. It might not be something new. It might have been used. But we always brought something for somebody to be a blessing to them. To be a blessing to them. To be a blessing to them. It could be some old shoes. Used shoes, but still good. You notice that that brother wears his pink shoes even when he's wearing a green kaftan. That's all he has. So you bring him black shoes. Every single time you saw family style people coming to church, they had something in their hand. Sometimes it could be something as small as handkerchief, a pair of socks, but we were a giving people. That, was, that is family worship center style. We do things called cilia in this place. Cilia is Christ's love in, in action. Where people bring clothes, they bring um, household furniture, um, um, television, fan, fridge, toaster, different kinds of things. And we display them here, shoes, food. We display them here. Those who have, bring. Those who do not have, come. And those who do not have, come, they take what they need and everybody's happy. I think we had one last year, towards the end of last year. It was a beautiful event. Beautiful. People brought things. Oh God, people brought things. People brought things. And we're going to do it again this year. We're going to have another Celia where you, are, where you can bring all the things that you don't need. Some of them, you even need them. Good clothes. I will never forget that day, Sister Funke, rolling one whole trolley to this place. One trolley was filled with beautiful clothes, well laundered. She dry cleaned them, put them in their bags, and brought them. And then she had on that one loaded with some Indomie and rice. Oh, Brother Emmanuel, Ojo, roll that thing in here with two or three bags of rice. He now saw the rice that we had. He said, Kai, I have one more bag at home. He went home and brought it to add to what he had brought. And then he looked, what do you need? He went downstairs to the spa and bought oil, granite oil, and indomie, and brought it up again so that people can have food. Christ's love in action. That is who we are supposed to be. Love is practical when you want to demonstrate it. Think of practical ways to demonstrate the love of God. We have to be people who do things like that. In this church, there was one year we had what they call Christmas in April. Oh, we made Christmas happen in April. April is too early in the year. But it was like Christmas for a lot of people because of the kinds of things we gave. And when they talk about um, being a blessing, you are thinking of giving, not receiving. It is more blessed to what? You are here saying, eh, nobody gives me anything. Do you give people anything? You just want to be receiving all the time. Be a blessing. Give. Hallelujah. In this church, we do things like angelic Christmas. Where pastor will tell us, be an angel this Christmas. How many of you have been visited by angels before? None of us. But you, human beings can be the angels that people would ever know. And if an angel visits you, you know they would overwhelm you with goodness and mercy, right? With good things. So when you go as an angel at Christmas, overwhelm somebody. 
overwhelm somebody. You know how some people will just come, okay, and they'll bring you um, a bottle of wine for Christmas. You can go beyond that. You can go beyond that. Imagine someone coming to visit you at Christmas. There is a bag of rice. There is a gallon of oil. There is um, um, some biscuit for the children. And then there is money in the envelope. You will just make the person, he will just be looking at the thing like this. Till you go, you are driving out of the gate. Shock. Shock people. The one that they wake up in the night and go and check if the bag of rice is still there. Shock people. We do things like that in this church. Shock you, overwhelm you with the love of God. Hallelujah. That is love, family, worship center, styly. Hallelujah. Number five, love your family. What's number one? Meet people's physical needs. Number two, meet people's emotional needs. Number three, meet people's spiritual needs. Number four, love the family worship center style. And number five, love your family. Husbands, love your wives. Love your wives. Wives, love your husbands. Be good to each other. Be competing in goodness, one with another. Be good to each other. Meet their needs. Express needs. The ones that they didn't express, but you know it's a concern. Meet their needs. Meet their needs. Oga, your wife has been struggling with that cow. You've not noticed, or you're just pretending. You know you can change that car, but uh, let her just be managing it. Meet their needs. Meet their needs. Meet their needs. Madam, <laughs> haven't you seen that Oga socks, socks has holes? And you know women, we are like that, too. We'll be ready. <laughs> A man doesn't care. He will tell himself that nobody's seen the socks. <laughs> it's inside the shoes. Holes everywhere. <laughs> okay, the way this man is laughing. I'm tempted to ask the husband to show us his socks. <laughs> We don't care. Some of us who carry handkerchief, we cannot spread it out. We we'll fold it like this because if you open it, you see the thing. You can actually—it looks like sieve. You there are holes. <laughs> With how much is socks? How much is handkerchief? But that is how we are. We will not go and buy. It's not because the thing is expensive. We just don't have the time, or we just don't care. But madam, care for us now. You go to the market at least every day. Okay, let's, let, maybe not every day, but I know at least most women, four or five times in a week, they're in the market. Buy socks for the man. It is nothing, but he will be so appreciative. Buy handkerchief. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the singlets or the, <laughs> or, or the boxers. We will wear it like that. <laughs> We are men. We don't care. Help us care. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, love your husbands. Love your husbands. Love your husbands. When the man comes home, let him know that someone came home. Ah, a lot of women, eh? Your husband has been out of the house from morning, comes in the evening, even welcome. <laughs> How was your day? If I let the day be anyhow, they don't care. Love your husbands. Love your husbands. Uh, sometimes you are, you are gracious, don't say, ah, welcome. That's all. Where is my food? It's in the pot. <laughs> you are saying, ah. Should I give this microphone to some men? All of you just look straight. It's not you I'm talking about. So the man goes to the pot, dishes his own food by himself. At least you are gracious enough not to finish the food. You left some for him now. That's grace. Then he tells you, please, can I have some water? Your hand caught. 
You are shaking your head. Your hand caught. You don't know where the water is. Go and get water for yourself. Just keep looking straight so that nobody will know it's you I'm talking about. Serve them. Serve them. Serve them. Serve your wife, serve your husband. Serve your wife, serve your husband. One of the gifts I have, as, as I, I don't know where I even learned it from, but I'm a handyman. I, I know how to fix things. So most of the time I just, it might not be every day, but once in a while I just go around the hand and I begin to fix things. I service doors, I, I hang something, I fix something that is falling apart. I, even electricity, I, I double a little. Change, yeah, change bulbs. I can change sockets. I can change plugs. All those kinds of things. Do things. Just make life easier for the woman and the entire family. Serve them. Serve them. Remove burdens. Destroy yokes. That is your work. Hallelujah. Parents, love your children. Don't spoil them. Love them. How many of you know the difference? You have a teenager and you are still washing clothes for them. That's not love. That is not love. In Benin, we have what we call it. We, say, we call it saka. You are spoiling the children. Love them, don't spoil them. Love them, don't overindulge them. But love the children. Hallelujah. Children, are they here? Okay, but all of us are now. Some of us have parents. Love your parents. Love your parents. Love your parents. <laughs> Some of them are at the point right now that when you call them, it's like God just called. Oh, God. <laughs> when I call my parents, my mom will be so happy. You will see her skipping the whole of that day. She's skipping and she's happy. She just spoke with her son. My dad would tell me that, car, you see this call you just did now? is worth to me more than half a million naira. It's like, hey, I should call more often. Call them. Once in a while, just find out, how are you, mama? How are you, papa? And sometimes, don't you just send them some money? Love your parents. Love your parents. Make life easy for them. As, as they keep getting older, you are trying to make life easier for them. Some of us might have to go back home and employ some small girl to be taking care of papa and mama. Fetch water for them. Your, some, your parents are 70, 80. They are still carrying bucket of water. Love them. Reduce their stress. Don't add to it. Make them proud. Make them proud. Make them proud. Stop frustrating your parents. Someone should take this message to the youth church. And teach it to them as well. Hallelujah. And then others, number six is others. Love your bosses. Ah, that one is not possible though. Pastor, you don't know my boss. He's a small witch. This man is, this man is a monster. Love them all the same. Didn't scripture say we should love our enemies? Didn't the scripture say we should pray for those who despitefully use us? Love them. No matter how bad they are. The Bible says the only, that we should owe no man nothing but to love them. You owe them love, so love them. Love your subordinates. Subordinates will be those under you, right? Love your subordinates. Love your colleagues. Those at your level, love them. Those under you, love them. Those above you, your bosses, love them. Love all men. Love the people in your office. Be a lover of people. Be that one person that agrees everybody. Not the one that has clicks. You come, you greet A, B, and C, and D can go to hell. No, love everybody. Love everybody. It's your birthday. You celebrated at home, um, but you have some cake left over. So you took the cake to your five friends in the office, and your office has 30 people. You give the five friends. The other ones, smoking a swallow and a saliva. Don't do things like that. Love everybody. Love everybody. Love everybody. Love your neighbors. Be your brother's or your neighbor's keeper. Love your neighbors. If you see something going wrong at your neighbor's house, let them know. Tell them. Love your neighbors. Love your domestic staff. 
Love your domestic self stuff. Helps, nannies. Don't call anybody house girl. Don't do that. Or house boy. Don't do that. And don't, don't allow your children to disrespect anyone that is working for you. Don't ever allow it. Your child that is three years old will sit down there and say, Teresa, come here. And you are laughing. Ah, this is my child and she's so, so, so bold, very authoritative. I will use soap and wash your mouth. Who is Teresa? Are you crazy? She's auntie. You wake, they wake up in the morning. Have you greeted your auntie? No, daddy. Go and greet auntie. Auntie, good morning. Treat them with respect. Treat them with respect. Treat them with respect. Give them, an, give them a listening ear. Sometimes you want to ask them what their dreams are. Oh, you think you are your children are the only ones that have dreams? Oh, you think you are the only one that can dream? Sometimes ask them, what are your dreams? Let them tell you. Oh, I plan to do this. I plan to do that. And some of them, outwardly, the only dream they have is to just sit in your house and serve you. Teach them, no, you have to have a dream bigger than this place. Let them dream. It's okay to dream. You might want to pay for them to go and learn how to sew or go and learn how to make cake because they, you, you must think of life for those people beyond your house. Talk with them. They are human beings too. Make them feel free. Oh, some of them cannot even near the sitting room when you are there. Oh, did you Calabar? Okay, now they cannot sit in the sitting room when you are there. Did you put a television in their room? Oh, your kids watch TV. They should go and sleep. Television is good. I learned a lot from TV. I, I, all through my life, I went to government schools. I dare say that I learned to speak English from Sesame Street, just watching television. It's the truth. Treat those people like human beings. Treat them better than you are doing right now. Love them. Show concern. Show concern. Show concern. Let them know that Oga cares. Madame cares. Love your domestic staff. Hallelujah. Cut them some slack. Some of them, you're overloading them. You know from the size of your house or the size of your family or the size of the work you are giving them to do, you need two or three helps. Go and get one or two more to assist them. That poor girl is breaking down every day. That poor boy is breaking down every day because you are overloading them. They are human beings too. Love them and care for them. Hallelujah. These are practical ways that we can demonstrate love. Hallelujah. We'll take benefits of working in love very quickly. Number one, it brings prosperity. Hallelujah. When you walk in love, you gain people. And people are your true wealth. Your real wealth is people. Oh, it is Apostle Selman that is saying that may you never be so poor that all you have is money. <laughs> may you never be so poor that all you have is money. True wealth is in people. So when you love it brings prosperity. Number two, it creates unity. Like in our church here, there's a lot of unity in this church because we're a loving church. We're a loving church. And we, sh we do our best to make sure that the love goes around. The love goes around. Hallelujah. Um, it, 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 it expresses God's image because God himself is love. You are your finest when you walk in love. You begin to look like God. When you display or demonstrate the love of God, guess what? You are expressing God to the people. Hallelujah. It expresses God's image. Number four, it takes away, away fear and torment. Is that not what the scripture says? That true love or perfect love cast away what? It takes away fear. When your children love you, they, 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 they don't come to you like Ojuju Kalaba. It removes the fear. When you can teach them to love, it takes away fear. 
Love sustains relationship. Why? Because love forgives all things, love bears all things, and love covers a multitude of sin. So when you love, you sustain relationships. Some of you cannot be friends with people for more than a month. All your relationships fail. Why? Maybe you're a selfish person. Begin to walk in love and see the reverse of that situation. Hallelujah. Love brings victories. Love brings victories. Because overcomers walk in love. Hallelujah. Love makes us confident on the day of judgment. Because you are a lover of God's people, you can boldly say that you are a sheep and not a goat. On that day when they begin to separate the sheep from the goat, you know on which divide you are going to be in. Hallelujah. Love guarantees answers to prayers. If you read through the scriptures, most of the miracles that Jesus wrought came from a place of love. He looked at the people. He loved them to the point that he didn't want them to go home before they go and start fainting on the way. He blessed bread that can ordinarily feed two people and he fed a multitude. It was born out of love for the people. Miracles come out of love. A leprous man, Jesus had compassion. His love went out first and the healing followed. Love guarantees answers to prayers. Love brings contact contentment because most of the time that they, we don't have contentment is because we are envious of what somebody else has but if you love them it removes envy and contentment comes hallelujah love brings growth love brings growth in the eyes of God and man you will grow if you walk in love have you seen people who don't walk in love, people who are haters, they look small in your eye. They might be director general or all those big titles that they carry, but because you know the man is a wicked man, doesn't love anybody but himself, he looks small in your eye. He passes, you look at him, small in your eye. But love brings growth. Love inspires faith and devotion. People who love would inspire faith and devotion in others. To inspire faith and devotion in others. Hallelujah. And give me a second to complete your notes. As we conclude this morning, I'm going to say to you four or five things, and I need for you to take note of them. Number one, you have more love in your heart than you know. You have more love in your heart that you, than you care to admit. You have more love in your heart than you can ever think or imagine. I know what I'm talking about. You have this love. All you need to begin to do is to think of um, ways, practical uh, ways that you can demonstrate this love. Begin to think of creative ways in which you can demonstrate this love. The love is there. You are a Christian. You are called by the name of Jesus. The love is there. Begin to think of practical ways in which you can demonstrate this love. All of us in this church must learn to, be, to, to become strive, to become um, what I would call love agents. In this world that is already suffocating with selfishness, too many selfish people suffocating this world, you go out and be love agents. You go out, be love agents. Love the people. Love your family, love the people. Even those in your house, show them love. Demonstrate the love of God. Romans chapter 5 and verse 5 tells us very clearly that this God's kind of love, the one they call agape, God has done what poured it abroad in your heart. Have you not seen it in scriptures? So the love of God is in your heart. It has been poured out in our heart by the Holy Spirit. The love is there. You have more love than you know or than you care to admit. Just begin to find practical ways creative ways to demonstrate this love. Allow this love that God has put in your heart to find expression through your actions. Give the love of God in your heart expressions. And as Family Worship Center members, God expects us to take this love to whole new heights. Take the love to whole new levels. Love like you are crazy. 
pastor, people will take advantage of us. It doesn't matter. Like we saw, when we talked about the goodness of God, we do it to God too. We take advantage of God. It doesn't matter. You are not doing it to them anyway. You are doing it to God. So as Family Worship Center, let's take this love message or love revolution to a whole new height or level. Why? Because love is our brand. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Hallelujah.